good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a golden rule, and there's a reason for it. And that reason is that we're connected in some strange way that we don't totally understand. And unless you are good to other people around you, unless you're kind and friendly and warm and loving, you're not going to f- and enjoy this life. You're just not. You're going to be problems everywhere you go. You're going to have problems everywhere you go. You got to figure out a way to enjoy this life. It's not because of Jesus. It's not because of Moses. It's not because of anybody that may or may not have ever existed. It's because that's how you fit in better in the world. That's how you stay positive. And it doesn't have to be some that was written 5,000 years ago on and animal skins that doesn't have to be the golden rule because it's old you know that's dumb we need to figure out like now today what what is you know the best way to live your life what is the you know there, there's got to be ways you can be putting forward the most positive energy I mean we know objectively what's causing pollution we know objectively what's causing birth defects and you know and are, we're taking in too much chemicals and not enough vitamins we know objectively all this stuff we know how to organize our world and yet we don't do it we know how to organize organize our health and yet very few people do it we know all these things the right path to like being like a happy healthy person is to do all the shit that we already know you're supposed to do take care of your body take care of your health take care of your mind your stress meditate be kind to people we all know that I mean, you ask anybody they know how to get by and to be the the the, the most evolved version of you that you can be I mean it's not like a, a magical checklist if you talk to people about it you said okay here you, you got a person you want to improve them what are the things you're gonna do to them okay well if I was a life coach the first thing I would say is this guy's got to get on a diet that makes him healthy I don't mean a diet just to lose weight I mean just healthy foods in your body v- many many vegetables vegetables a lot of good good quality protein a lot of water stop the sodas stop the bullshit start working out your body and get a better sense of like how this machine feels when it's moving it's flowing better there's less tension in it your mind feels like relaxed and and you enjoy every single moment of the day better step one everybody knows that step right what's step two be cool to people be nice to as many people as you can smile at as many people as you can have them smile back at you tip well when you go to restaurants just do the most you can be as nice as you can you know and just still manage to not have people walk all over you just get through this life as nice as you can what else do what you want to do with your life right don't don't go be doing something you don't enjoy don't do something that's don't get locked into you know a, a car that you can't afford and doing something crazy because you need the money don't don't do that do what you want to do do what the fuck is it that you really want to do because if someone else is doing it you can do it you know I mean everybody makes their own path through this world but a lot of people don't follow the path that they really f- feel pulled to. You know, there's for whatever reason, they got negative programming. You know, when they were kids, someone told them they couldn't do it or told them to take the shortcut or, or take the, uh, the, the sure route. That's a, a sad thing, man. When you talk to dudes, especially like talented dudes, and they don't follow up with what they want to do, you know? A bunch of people that will say, yeah, well, I have a family. So, you know, it's a great idea for you to just go out there and go crazy. I have people to support. You need to listen. Stop saying that. Stop saying any of those things. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary, anyone, whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f*** it is, everyone encounters difficulties. There is no easy road. It does not exist. It is impossible. Everyone has issues. If you have time to pursue a hobby, if you have time to do anything in your life, you can better yourself. And here's one way you never better yourself. When you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not, that sh- is f- dangerous. When you give yourself an escape, yeah, well, that's easy for you to say, you know, you do this, you do this, do this, and to tr- trust me. Everybody has a hard road. I wanted to jump out a window several times during my young life. I wanted to jump in front of a train, just end it because it's too much pressure. Not really, but you know what I'm saying, theoretically. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and, and moments in your life where it's really f- difficult and you're trying to figure out what the f- your path is going to be. It's hard as sh- but. Stefan and I were talking about this before the podcast starts that that is what makes you a person and those difficult moments are what build your character. Show me a great man who's the son of a great man. You know, that's what we're saying. These kids that are born billionaires, you're f***ed. You're f***ed. 
you're never going to be a self-made person. You have a backup trust for your backup trust for your trust. And you're f***ed, man. I'm fascinated by martial arts. I'm fascinated by comedy. I'm fascinated by many, many different things. I don't understand when people say they're bored. Because if I had the time to live a hundred lives, I'd be speaking different languages. I'd be living in different countries. I would I would try a number of different careers because I think there's a lot of unbelievably fascinating, puzzling, complex things that you could study in this world. Mm. That that's just me and my personality. But that's a personality also that I've cultivated over years of Would challenges. Would you like that as a kid too? Well, I was involved in martial arts very early, yeah. and I think that is one of the things that motivated me to uh, explore difficult tasks because through difficult tasks you learn an incredible amount about yourself and uh, you through through the fire of competition you get to understand you get to understand motivation you get to understand the resistance that you have inside your mind to doing hard work mm. you get to understand the rewards of discipline like you don't truly appreciate relaxation unless you've worked hard mm. and that is the yin and the yang of life and I've said this to to the point of people getting sick of it but one of the worst decisions a man can make i can only speak for men obviously um is to be comfortable mm. I, i don't think you should try to be comfortable i think what you should try to do is try to earn comfort mm. and if you if you can get a day off where you you you've worked hard and you've you know, accomplished goals that day off will be so sweet when i work hard and i sit in front of the tv i enjoy the shit out of it i put my feet <laughs> up i have a nice drink you know i i enjoy yeah, one my of those free chairs time. that nids your back or something I like that i do have one of those do you really those are great they're yeah. great right yeah i don't use it that much though honestly i'm more of a workaholic than i should be probably if if the the balance was i probably should relax more than i do but i never feel like i earned it but that's part of the reason why when i do feel like i earned it i can enjoy It. It's because I am more connected to the idea that I need to to accomplish things, mm. and to and it's not, not like for anybody else's benefit other than my own or anybody else's approval other than my own. I just when I have a task, whether it's uh, I today I'm going to write a thousand words, you know, or two thousand or whatever the number is. If I don't do that, I don't. I'm not. I write things down. Like I'll write down a list of things that get accomplished that day. And if I don't accomplish that, I'll get sick. Like I'll, it'll drive me f crazy if I can't fill out that list. Uh, that drives me nuts, you know. But that's what led me to be a championship level martial artist. That's mm. what led me to achieve. The, it's like that. It's the reinforcement of those goals. Like understanding that the, you can achieve those goals. It's going to be difficult. You're going to push through the difficulty, and then you're going to understand what difficulty truly is, and how much of it is just mental. How much of it is just in your mind. This adversity to to uh, difficult task or to struggle, you know. And a lot of people have that. They're scared. They're scared of of complications. They're scared of of failure. Failure is a big one that people are afraid of. But failure is one of the most important things you could ever have, as far as like the motivation to do things differently. Mm. One of the reasons why I think that. I'm good at friendships and relationships is because I failed at them in the past. One of the things that I'm good at comedy is because I bombed on stage. One of the reasons why I'm good at work is because I've been a sh worker in the past, and I know the the feeling of failure, the feeling of uh, of shame, of being like a weak, non motivated, lazy person. That's a weak feeling. It's mm. a you don't respect yourself, you know. And I have this phrase that I use all the time to people to to try to motivate people. I say that. Be the hero in your own movie. Pretend that if mm. your life was a movie and your life started now, what would the hero do? What would the person that you respect do? What would the person that you admire, person that inspires you, what would they do? Well, do that. Sh <laughs> and if you do that, you slowly build momentum. You like today. I did what I wanted to do. Today, I started a class in yoga. I did this. I did all these things that I was saying I wasn't going to do, and now I feel momentum. And yeah. momentum is a very important. Point in people's lives. That's why some folks don't like to take days off because they feel like they're losing momentum and they sort of have to restart the wheel up again after a vacation. And there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit.
and then one day something goes wrong. And I mean, that's why spoiled kids are so sad. Like a spoiled young boy is one of the saddest things ever. A young boy that becomes a man and can't take care of himself, and his dad has to keep on rescuing him. His dad has to keep on bailing him out of situations and giving him money. I've met guys like that, and that is a crippling affliction. When they don't have the character themselves to be able to get by in life, they constantly need someone to help them and bail them out. Even as a grown man, I've met guys in their 40s that still need help from their parents. I'm like, what the f- man? You're never gonna get it right because somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just gotta get up and get shit done. There's sometimes we have to f- pull yourself up and you have to push forward, even if you want to stay in bed. And if you don't do that, you just keep calling on your daddy, and your daddy keeps rescuing you. You never develop those tools. You never develop that ability to recognize what you're doing wrong with your life, because you're you're soft. You got a cushiony. You got a safety net. A safety net for your safety net. Say if you had like a 20 year old, and he's just a f- doper, where he wake and bakes and doesn't get anything done. He's just always like hanging out with his friends and playing video games, and he's just a f- loser. I, I I wish there was a way. You could show someone like that, like I know that you're getting some comfort and satisfaction out of just laying around, doing nothing, eating, getting fat. But your life would feel better and richer if you had a goal. You chase that goal, you accomplish some things, you would get this boost of confidence, you'd get this boost of self-esteem, like whatever it is that you're into doing. Maybe you're into drawing comic books. Maybe you're into uh, making pottery or sculptures or but find whatever the f- that is and pursue that. Instead of doing nothing, like the people that are doing nothing, those are the real people. I mean, look, doing something might be as simple as like that Alex Honnold guy. He just climbs rocks, but he's world class rock climber. It's something, but and it's also a goal of his, of yeah. his, and he's also the best at it. Right? Yes, yeah. But those those people who smoke pot all day and do that, those are also the guys who hate on Joe Rogan for being in shape. You know what I'm saying? Or being disciplined, or get on Kevin Hart's Instagram and hate on. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't. It's it's their own insecurities. I see what you're saying, but I I would assume they would get motivated by seeing other people do something with their lives. Like that should be motivating, not yeah. But if you grew up, if you grew up with losers and you're around a bunch of people with shitty attitudes, especially if it's in your household, <clears throat> I was very lucky that uh, both my mom and my stepdad they're not they're not they're the least hater people I've ever met in my life. They're just not haters in any way. Like if someone's doing well, they're always like, wow, look at this guy. Or like, wow, look at her. Yeah, or, wow, celebrate. look at him. There was never any hate in my house in terms of uh, other people's success. But if you grew up with a dad and your dad's like, yeah, these, all these rich assholes, this, he thinks she's a badass and this, you know, there's people that look at other people's success and instead of saying, wow, look, I did a lot of work. Like the way, I'm a successful person, but the way I look at Kevin Hart, he exhausts me, you know, or The Rock. Those guys exhaust me. I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, I feel lazy next to those guys. Like, they do so much. Like, those guys are so overbearingly ambitious, you know, but some people, they see that and they compare themselves and they don't like it. So they can start getting really shit. And it's like a natural feeling to try to chip away at that person. The worst people that you know are the people that don't have a good self-judge. That yeah. everything they do is awesome. Yeah. The, those <laughs> never grow anywhere. Right. I mean, that's a huge issue with comedy. Um, when you run into people that have a terrible comedy sets but think they did great, like we would always, Greg Fitzsimmons and I would always talk about that with, with like open micers. Like, there's people that hear phantom laughs. Like they think they're doing great, and they have this delusional self-opinion where everything they do is awesome. They don't know why they're not successful already. They don't, don't know why they're not famous. And those people, I believe, I mean, in some sort of a weird narcissistic way, you could look at it this way, that those people are there to teach you. This is the consequences of not feeling that awful feeling when you fail. I was talking to Burr um, a couple weeks ago. He did a set at the Comedy Store, and I saw part of it. It was uh, he was killing. And then I ran into him in the hallway, and uh, I go, oh, man, main room show was great, right? And he goes, yeah, I f***ed up at the end, though. I tried to hang in there too long, and the last bit bombed. Like, he was just, it was rotten at him that the last bit, like, he goes, I f***ing hung in there too long. I should have got off of the bit before that. Yeah. And like, But, you know, when I was in there, he was f***ing killing, yeah. you know? But that wasn't in his mind. The yeah. success was not in his mind. This, the, what was like, okay, 
whatever that happened at the end, don't f- do that again. Right. You know? right. But that's why he's Bill Burr. That's yeah. why he's really good. You're alone with your thoughts. You get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, of oh. you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you 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 set up a life that you didn't really want. You're 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 trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage you've got credit card bills you got student loans you have to pay you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed and all that and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them oh my goodness then you're fully locked in you can't take any chances whatsoever and oftentimes people make the mistake of getting stuck and it is just a tactical mistake just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you get stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not gonna always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. And the system will set out honey pots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. But those that's a pain in the ass. So you got to hire more people and train them. And they want to set it up so that you stick around, you stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem, to see that issue as it comes up on the map. And no, no, I think this is a right turn to see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your your future and then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them and then look at the people that are have kind of taken chances and navigated their way what do they do differently than you what 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 objectivity do they have that maybe you lack what insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not that you step back and you go you know i just don't i just don't want to look at myself that closely but the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results. One of the things that's causing this funk that people are in is that we're living our lives, many of us at least, in these very unfulfilling ways where you're going to this office with artificial light and you're doing something you don't want to do all day long and then you get home and you're tired. And on top of that, you're eating sh- You're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda and your body is just like, what in the f- is this we're supposed to be out in the fields we're supposed to be walking up hills we're supposed to be looking for animals or gathering vegetables we're supposed to be doing all these things that our body's designed to do we're supposed to be in nature yeah and nature is like a medicine like it literally is a medicine to you like people people that go you don't have to go hunting you don't have to go fishing just go hike man just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out you know, there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely like soul filling. Mm-hmm. There's like something about like when I was in Colorado and there was this um, this area of Boulder where you drive up one of these roads and there was this area where you could park and it was this incredible view, man. And these people just park and just go out there and just look. But you get there and you park and you go because you would see you, you're literally seeing the continental divide. These snow-capped mountains in July, yeah. in July, it's covered with snow. For whatever reason, uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. But it's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life a lot of those are connected to discomfort like discomfort is your friend it really is like discomfort and uh, and not being happy and content with certain situations in life or certain feelings in life they're massive massive motivators and they're they're amazing at at facilitating change and yet are instinct is to avoid those and just sit on the couch and watch some reality show about dudes who make moonshine with our jaw open like it's it's bizarre